From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Hey there, good Thursday morning. It's 5.30, welcome to Montana This Morning. I'm Victoria Hill. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. And again, thanks to Ed for being here and for Miller This Morning. And what are we gonna have today, Ed? We're gonna have some snow to start. Okay. But that goes away. Oh, it, right. Again, another day of the weather not making up its mind. And and really, Billings is left out of the snow. It's really going to be around us. Let's go ahead oh, and take a look. Sorry, at... guys. <laughs> yeah. Now oh, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> I got no problems. <laughs> I'm not leaving town today. If I were, I'd be more upset. Sorry. Temperatures right now at 30 degrees at the airport. A little bit of a northwest breeze on the uh, Stockman Bank weather cam. Temperatures around us, 20s and 30s. And there where you can see where the snow showers are. More around Belfry over towards Red Lodge and then down into areas of northern Wyoming. There are some slick conditions in a few places. We got a little bit of snow showing up even for you around Miles City this morning. So here's a look at Doppler radar. As the snow showers fade out during the morning hours, we're going to be left with a more comfortable afternoon. This morning we're dealing with areas where we have the travel concerns and then later in the day we'll be looking at some stronger winds. For the Billings area, sunshine and pushing near 40 for a daytime high. Our top story this morning, there are still water issues at the Meadowlark Mobile Home Court in Billings and residents are fed up. As we first reported, residents say they've had brown water flowing out of their faucets for months. Q2's Andrea Lutz went to the neighborhood to check in on the status of a fix. Right here at the water treatment facility at the Meadowlark neighborhood, crews were inside this facility Wednesday working on the water system, but they say it could be another two weeks before the water is actually fixed. That's because they're waiting on that filter system. But that being said, residents who live here are still not satisfied with that time frame. They can't drink their water and they're finding it hard to do basic things like wash and shower with it. A look inside Meadowlark's water treatment plant shows pipes, meters, and tanks running as normal. But that fix for discolored water is still days away. While you know, it's not the ideal situation to have to wait on them, that's really the only option we have is to wait for the parts. Lisa Kaufman with the DEQ says that part is meant to filter out iron and manganese, which discolors the water. It doesn't mean that it's not safe. It just means nobody wants to drink it because it looks yucky. The agency started fielding formal requests back in December about the water, so inspectors came out to investigate. But a quick search of Meadowlark's testing shows... And for at least the last 10 years, they have had no bad bacteriological samples. Still, there's concerns. Jennifer Madden has lived here for 10 years. Yeah. And I don't think we're being told the whole story. She says water began pouring brown back in October. She, along with others, have too many questions they say aren't being answered. It is not fair to anybody, and most of us out here have kids. Even though the mobile park owners say they're handing out bottled water, she's found herself having to purchase it. I probably go through five cases a week at least. A company called Haven Park purchased Meadowlark back in 2020, and they say the well system is more than 60 years old. It's showing its age. A spokesperson for the company said in a statement that water samples are sent out each month and tests have always come back safe. So we've never had it this bad. But while Meadowlark waits for that filter system to arrive, reality sets in every day for those residents. So, and we're showering in the water that's in the tap. Every time Madden's kids use the bathroom, she fills up her coffee maker or the washer is going, She's reminded of the damage she says the water is doing to her home. I think that there's an issue with it um, that we're not being told. While the DEQ waits for results, Kaufman says she has no reason to believe they'll show the water is unsafe. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. And meanwhile, there's a critical need for housing in the city of Billings, and a developer is trying to help change that with a new project on Lewis Avenue. But as QG's Zelina Howder explains, some neighbors in the area don't love the idea. Hundreds of new apartments and condos could soon be coming to this Billings neighborhood on Lewis Avenue. Plans are in the works to tear down the Elks Lodge and reinvent the property. And that has some neighbors in the area concerned. Not much has changed in this neighborhood along Lewis Avenue over the past 60 years, but this bird's eye view could soon look a whole lot different. Traffic is a problem. Safety is a problem. 
construction, who knows how long it would go on. A Salt Lake City-based developer called Thrive wants to transform this eight-acre Elks Lodge property into more than 200 apartments and townhomes. Yes, they are planning on building. Um, what exactly, how exactly it'll be housing units, how many depends on after the zoning is done. The property is currently zoned as commercial. In order for apartments to go up, that would have to change. Under the proposal, everything you see here in green would become multi-level apartments. Townhomes would be built in the blue along Lewis. The orange is currently the Elks Lodge tennis courts. That would stay. What Thrive Development is proposing is to build 200 to 250 rental units on this property here. Jonathan Pert has lived in the neighborhood for 14 years. He agrees that Billings needs more affordable housing, but he's worried about what a high density condo will do to the already busy area. The basic nature of this neighborhood is gonna change because you are going to pack 400, 600, 800 people into this small area here and it's gonna cause a lot of problems. I think with the, those units coming, there would be a lot of changes in our streets. Maybe street lights would have to be added and that would be at taxpayers' expense. Dione Roberts has lived in the neighborhood her entire life. That's the mixed use three in the back that is high density that has me concerned that um, does not fit in with my neighborhood. Hundreds of units would also mean hundreds of parking spots, all topics that the Zoning Committee and City Council will have to consider in the coming weeks and months. As for the future of the almost 60-year-old Elks Lodge, they're currently searching for a new home and a new location. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. In other news around Billings, residents of a neighborhood in the Billings Heights are thanking School District 2 for plans to make the area safer. Kuchu's David Jay tells us more. This is the parking lot where the 15-year-old was shot about a week and a half ago at Castle Rock Park. The Heights Task Force met on Tuesday and heard about some possible plans about putting some lights in here to make it safer. And we did have a chance to talk with one of the people in the neighborhood about how that might help. Those living close to Castle Rock Park say the parking lot off of Constitution Avenue draws some activity at night. Kids in cars and sometimes vagrants, trash can and there's MADs being thrown in there and blowing, you know, it's just lots of um, problematic activity. Mark Carey lives a few hundred yards from the parking lot that is on land owned by School District 2 and south of the park and he says change is necessary. They like to call it a black hole. If it's dark out, especially when the moon's not full, if you uh, look over here, you can't see anything. A police investigation continues in the shooting death of 15-year-old Cohen Parker. And on Friday, one of his friends talked about the incident in that dark parking lot. We had problems with these kids for a while, and they ended up, they ended up saying they wanted to meet up, and they were going to come to my house. But I told them we were just going to meet up somewhere, so we went to the Heights. And then that stuff happened. And others have also come to the parking lot. One of the neighbors explained last night that people were sitting in their cars, whether it was a, a nice dark party spot or there were people that may have been sleeping in their cars back here as well. Laura Drager is on the Heights Task Force and says that will soon change. At a task force meeting on Tuesday, Superintendent Greg Upham announced the district is working with Northwestern Energy to install four lights in the parking lot. And I'm sure that Greg has told them that this is an absolute priority for our community. I was impressed that uh, uh, Superintendent Upham was acting so quickly and taking it to heart. The superintendent says the lighting was motivated by the tragic incident. And while he does not have an exact date, he expects the lights to be up in a matter of weeks. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Well, there's some big national news this morning. President Joe Biden will be able to fill his first Supreme Court seat this year with Justice Stephen Breyer expecting to retire this summer. CBS's Deborah Alfaron has details on who may replace him and what's ahead for the confirmation process. Today, Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer is expected to announce his retirement at the White House. Let him make whatever statement he's going to make. 
President Biden declined to comment further as the news broke yesterday. But the president made this declaration on the campaign trail in 2020. I'm looking forward to making sure there's a black woman on the Supreme Court. The top candidates are all sitting judges. The front runner, 51-year-old federal appeals court judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, a Harvard Law School graduate and former law clerk for Justice Breyer. Thank you very much, Mr. President. The 83-year-old Breyer, a liberal was nominated by President Clinton in 1994. He's faced some pressure to retire while Democrats control Congress over concerns a Republican Senate would block any future nomination. When exactly I should retire or will retire uh, has many complex parts to it. I think I'm aware of most of them. Breyer will likely stay on the bench until the end of the court's term this summer. Then all eyes will be right here on Capitol Hill for an intense confirmation process. We want to get this done as soon as possible. Three Republicans voted to confirm Jackson to her current position, including her Maine's Eddie Susan Rush. Collins. We can take our time, have hearings, go through the process. Breyer's replacement will not change the court's ideological balance, a six to three conservative majority. Deborah Alfarone, CBS News, Capitol Hill. If no Republicans support the nominee, all 50 Democrats can still confirm on their own with Vice President Harris casting the tie-breaking vote. Republicans eliminated the filibuster for nominations in 2017 after President Trump took office and were able to fill three Supreme Court seats. The U.S. and NATO are flatly rejecting Russia's demands that NATO ban Ukraine and other former Soviet states from joining the alliance. But they did offer compromises on arms control and missile placement. Russia has not yet responded. The U.S. estimates a Russian attack could come in the next three weeks, but may be delayed while the Winter Olympics are ongoing. Yesterday, Russian and Ukrainian negotiators met with other diplomats in Paris and promised to respect a ceasefire. With all of the news of potential military conflict, you may still be wondering why is Russia even interested in taking Ukraine? Reporter Joe St. George takes a closer look at that and how a conflict would impact your life. Ukraine. If you look at a globe, you may have trouble finding it. But the country located in Eastern Europe is where 44 million people live. Right now, U.S. officials say more than 100,000 Russian troops are on the border. The capital of Ukraine and the capital of Russia are separated by an 11 hour drive or so. Tensions between Ukraine and Russia have been high for years with Russia invading back in 2014. So why is Moscow so interested in the Eastern European country? We're just seeing uh, the Russians and Putin in this case trying to restore somewhat uh, greater Russia. Jim Townsend is the United States' former Deputy Secretary of Defense for Europe and NATO. He says you can't understand this crisis without first understanding history. During the Cold War, Russia was part of the Soviet Union, and the Soviet Union consisted of much of Eastern Europe, including Ukraine. Townsend says its collapse in the 1990s has always upset Russian President Vladimir Putin. And Putin, of course, was a creature of the Cold War. Putin laid this out in a speech this past summer. Uh, saying that the that there's really not a country of Ukraine. Ukraine is Russia. Many Ukrainians, of course, disagree, which is why leaders there have increased their reliance on the United States and our military. U.S. equipment has been used for years. The Florida National Guard is even training Ukrainian troops right now. That upsets Moscow. He doesn't want to see those forces too close to him. He likens this to the Cuban Missile Crisis. He says, well, how would you feel, United States? If we went back to, to Cuba, a conflict, if it happens, could impact your life. U.S. troops could deploy and gas prices could go up since Russia produces so much of the world's energy. If you're wondering why now, Townsend says Russia may think conditions are right for them to get away with it. Germany's longtime leader Angela Merkel has just left office and President Biden is struggling to convince the world he can heal America's divisions. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Staying overseas, North Korea has reportedly fired another round of ballistic missiles into the sea. It's believed to be the country's sixth missile test this month. A U.S. State Department spokesperson condemned the launches as a violation of multiple U.N. Security Council resolutions. He says the United States remains committed to a diplomatic approach and called on North Korea to engage in dialogue. Stocks fell after Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell spoke following the Fed's two-day policy meeting. As expected, Powell said the central bank could raise interest rates as soon as it tries to rein in inflation. Analysts expect that to happen in March. It would be the first hike since the pandemic began. 
With the price of college rising and an aging workforce, there's never been a better time to consider picking up a trade. Q2's Casey Conlon went to Red Lodge, where a new facility is helping students learn more about a variety of careers. Red Lodge High School was already one of the most beautiful in our area. Now it's one of the most desirable after Wednesday's grand opening of their Career Technical Education Center that is giving students a leg up down about any career path they'd like to choose. Right now I've got automotive, welding, college physics, and robotics, so I spend most of my day in there. The new CTE Center is a trademan's paradise. Looking forward to coming to school every day now instead of sitting in the classroom all day. There's a full machine shop and wood shop, three automotive bays. I feel like I can fix almost anything on there now. Oh, here you go. Yes. We've got a green screen. Yes. yes, you heard Governor Greg Gianforte right. It's Ed McIntosh's favorite room in the building, a floor-to-ceiling green screen for all your media arts needs. Gianforte was at the ribbon-cutting ceremony today because increasing trade jobs has been a big part of his first year in office. The state will pay up to $3,000 per year per student who wants to become a carpenter, or a plumber, or an electrician, or a welder. A uh, welding class is going to benefit an engineer just as much as going to college, probably more so with the hands-on experience. College costs keep going up. U.S. News & World Report's numbers here show the average yearly price of a four-year in-state public university over $10,000. Private? Almost four times that. Brandon Emineth didn't know anything about being a welder when he got to high school. Now. I'm planning on going to, to get my associate's degree in welding. I didn't know I would like it or anything, and so having this uh, center is just, it, it opens up your eyes to new, new jobs that you never thought you'd want to do. Including jobs in agriculture. There's a new building with some new friends. It's a big reason Trent Peterson wants to become a first generation rancher. The process of have, starting from nothing to getting the food on the plate, it, it's just it's that satisfying feeling of, you know, you did something for somebody. That's the goal, right? If you're, if you're happy in what you're doing, you tend to be more successful in what you're doing. Be prepared for a lot of success stories coming out of Carbon County. Casey Conlon, MTN News. Thank you so much for watching Billings only local morning newscast. Coming up, you're never too young to be a hero. We'll show you how two boys sprung into action to save a family's pets. The time is now 5.46. We'll be back with Ed's forecast after this.